Our online training program so far has been about how electricity is created and how to define frequency in the abstract. It can be a little difficult to see why this topic is so important without some reference to the real world, so we decided we would try to bring some real world applications in a series of informal videos that will not be as polished as our regular training material, but will hopefully give you another perspective to the topics. I'm sitting right now in front of a test set connected to two relays. I, it's One of them is an SEL311C line protection relay and the other is a Beckwith Electric M3425A generator relay. Both relays have identical under frequency settings with a 59 hertz pickup and a 600 cycle time delay which means that if the frequency I inject into the relays is less than 59 hertz those relays should operate in 600 cycles. However, these relays use different references for the time delay and cycles so they will have different time delays. The SEL relay will use the injected frequency which means that the actual time delay in seconds will vary depending on what frequency is being injected into the relay at that moment in time. The Beckwith relay will operate in 5 seconds every time, and when I say 5 seconds I mean 10 seconds every time, because the 600 cycle delay is based on the system frequency, which in my case is 60 Hz. So 600 cycles divided by 60 Hz equals 10 seconds. So let's see that in action. Right now you can see that I'm connected to the relay. I have a frequency that I'm generating at 58 hertz. I'm connected to the Beckwith relay right now. And this first timer here is the timer in seconds. So this will be how long the relay will take to operate, which in my test case that I ran while the, I wasn't recording ended up to be 10.0169 seconds. The fault timer beneath that, that one's in cycles, but that is cycles based on the system frequency. So that's based on 60 hertz. So right now it's 601.01 cycles for that last time te timing test that I ran. The third timer, that is the fault timer in cycles based on the frequency I'm generating. So if I open up my calculator program and I bring it over here and I say what is 10.0169 divided by 58 hertz whoops times 58 so 10.0169 times 58 Hertz that should give me a number of 580.98 so you can see exactly uh, how these numbers came to be so let's run that test again so I'm gonna push the fault button and now the relay is seeing the 58 Hertz and I'm waiting for the trip to come in And the trip came in just about the same time it did last time, which is 10.02 seconds, which is 600 cycles based on 60 hertz and 50, 581 cycles based on 58 hertz. So let's try changing the frequency. I'm going to type in 57 hertz. So if this relay is basing its 600 cycles on the system frequency, we shouldn't notice a change at all except in that bottom fault timer which should be closer to 570 cycles instead of 580 because the 580 is based on 58 hertz. So let's take a look at that. We'll hit fault and we wait 10 seconds. And there my trip came in, which again is 10 seconds or 600 cycles based on 60 hertz and 571 cycles based on 57 hertz. So this particular test set, the default timer is the bottom one, the 571.15 cycle timer, which could be a problem if you were going to try and test this relay. And actually the other set setting here, the 601.21 cycle, that timer never existed in this, in this test set's history. And uh, that was a problem for me one day when I was actually trying to test some re uh, a Beckwith relay that required 180 hertz. So I requested that they add another timer for the Beckwith timer, and that's what I got. I got the second timer right here. So I'm going to switch the contacts. So now we're going to be looking at the Schweitzer relay instead of the Beckwith relay. So now I'm going to run the same test. So I'm going to hit 57 hertz. But this time, remember, it's the Schweitzer relay and not the Beckwith relay. So it should operate at 600 cycles based on 57 hertz, which is that bottom timer right here. 
So that, if you were to use a, re- if this test set happened to have a timer that would only base it on 60 cycles or in seconds, really, then that timer would show 636.56 cycles, which would be a problem. That would probably tell me to fail the relay if I looked at the relay specifications. And then you'll also notice that the time is 10.6 seconds, which is something that everybody should understand. So because this relay uses the injected frequency to count cycles, that means that the time in seconds should be different when I run that test again. So I'm going to push fault. And so this time I'm generating 58 hertz. And the previous time was 10.6 seconds, I believe. And this one will be 10.43 seconds. Notice that the bottom fault timer still says 600, it's around 600 cycles. And then the fault timer here got, uh, is at 626 cycles based on 60 hertz. So you can see how it's very easy to get the wrong number if you don't know how the relay works and you don't know how the, the test set is calculating cycles. So it's something to be very wary of. And if you're ever in doubt, the easiest thing to do is to change the frequency. If you get a different number in seconds, then you know that the, uh, the, the relay is calculating cycles based on what you're generating. So if I put in a 56 hertz, for example, and I run this test again, so the last test was 10.4375 seconds. And this time the test is going to be 10.79 seconds. So we're talking 0.3 seconds, which is almost forever in electrical terms. So if you change the frequency and the fault timer in seconds changes, and you're not testing some other element by accident, then you know that the relay will always operate based on your generated frequency. If you do the same test on a Beckwith, we already saw that it continued to put out 10 seconds no matter what frequency I was generating, which helped me figure out what was going on. So then, if you ever want to know how your timer is, how your timer works on your test set, you just get both of these values on the screen at the same time, you push your calculator button, and then you say, all right, what is 10.79, whoops, 10.7974, what is that times 60? And that is 647.84 cycles. So you'd look at your timer, and if it matched that, then you would say, all right, absolutely, that is that my test set works on 60 hertz or the system frequency, or 50 hertz if you were outside of North America. And you, the other way to do it would be to go 10.7974 times 56 hertz, and that gives me 604.65 cycles, so you can see how those two timers work together. So now that we've uh, looked at it in the real world, you can start to go through the exercise, and you can see how I'm calculating these values, and you can learn how to do it yourself quickly and easily. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed this video.